Good day friends, Rob with you here again. So I want to talk about a few things in this video that I think uh, are worth addressing. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about um, is homosexuality. Now usually when Christians like myself speak against homosexuality, you know, it's almost without fail, um, you get someone accusing you of homophobia or bigotry. No. But then again, this is a category error, because I'm speaking against homosexuality as a lifestyle, not a, I'm not speaking against homosexuals as people. And then, and then most, most people can separate those two. So my, my contention for, with homosexuality doesn't determine how I treat homosexuals. I'm against homosexuality because I believe it's a natural abomination to God and at least all kinds of mental, uh, psychological and emotional health issues. No psychological, emotional, psychological, emotional, and physical health problems, <clears throat> and mental. So mental, emotional, psychological, and physical health problems that uh, that are statistically proven that arise out of living a homosexual lifestyle, um, and all of which I've dealt with. But so again, it's a category error. So you, accusing me of bigotry or, or homophobia is just uh, well, it's. Uh, it's again, it's a category. Um, so that you know, and so it, so I don't give too much credence or if any to those kind of uh, responses because I know that I'm dealing with uh, someone who doesn't understand the argument. The second thing is uh, abortion. So <clears throat> abortion will face you know, bor bor pro, pro abortion or pro choice advocates will tell you that well. It's the mother's right to decide if she wants to abort her unborn child. But the thing is, abortion, we have to understand it is, it's legalized murder. murder, Because uh, every credible biology, biology book on the planet will affirm that life starts at conception. So if you kill your unborn child, even though it's legal, it's still ethically, morally wrong. So, and, you know, and the Lord will hold women who've had abortions accountable for the slaughter of their unborn child. Um, again, this is not an attack on women who had abortions or maybe thinking about getting an abortion, um, but uh, I would just caution you if you're a woman and you get pregnant because, um, through, um, you know, a fling, you're just, you know, fornicating with, with a guy or a bunch of guys and you just happen to get pregnant because you weren't being wise with your sexual choices. Now, if you, I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you, you, know, you can't, um, how you can and can't live sexually. Um, I'm suggesting that it's, well, one, it's uh, being a being sleeping with several people is um, not ideal, and fornicating even with the same person, fornication means sex outside of marriage, is also a bad idea. But again, I'm not, I'm not telling you how to live your life. I'm suggesting to you that it's a much the best sexual choice there is is to have sex between as a, as a married person with someone of the opposite sex. Now there was a time where I didn't even have to say the last part of that, but we're not we're not in that <laughs> that day anymore, unfortunately. So, best sexual choice there is is um, find someone of your opposite sex, um, court them, date them, marry them, then have all the sex you want and. You'll have God's blessing, and uh, you'll uh, have strong bonds. Um, okay, so so again, so abortion, homosexuality, and then of course just um, logic, logic, and reason. <clears throat> so as you know, if and what if that I'm a Christian, so obviously I'm a theist. Um, so I contend that theism match. Uh, Theism generally, and Christianity specifically, are the most logical conclusions of positions, epistemologically speaking, for any person to have. Now, I haven't really um, fleshed out that, many, that often why the God of the Bible is the most logical uh, and only logical one to, it, that the God of the Bible is the only one that makes sense of the dilemma that we're in. I haven't done that that often, but... But for, I'm, I'm not going to get into the Bible 
the God of the Bible per se, as which God. But right now I'm just going to say that God. <laughs> so, um, and so we get logic. Um, so because so if, if the thoughts in your in your mind and mind um, are nothing more than the process of an unguided natural process arising through natural selection, then you have no choice. Then there's no such thing as logic because everything is determinism. And in order to in order to use logic, you have to be you have to be able to reason think against things. So, in other words, the only way I can know it's illogical for me to take my hand and put it on um, a, the stove element. Is to you know I actually don't even have to do that okay, so because I I can know that just through, through common sense that defies common sense. So I'm trying to think of something that's a logical and natural. Realm. Okay, okay. So this is uh, NCIS season twenty. Um, no, I enjoy NCIS. It's a I I think it's a fun and well done um, TV series. But that's neither there. But it it'd be illogical for me. To think that this, because the, this is a, it comes in DVD, so it would be illogical for me to think that this would fit into a uh, floppy disk on the old desktops, if you will, because uh, a CD is bigger than a so it's a floppy disk. So, but it's a it's a different shape, a different size. So it's illogical for me to think that I can fit a something that should be that that cause that um, obviously the only thing that there would be rectangular in nature, and the, and the DVD is obviously circular in nature and shape, so it'd be illogical for me to think that, um, this is probably a bad analogy, but <laughs> I'm going, I started with it, so I might as well finish it, so it's illogical, it would be illogical for me to think that a circular um, uh, object would fit into something that's meant for a rectangular um, slot. That's illogical, right? So. <clears throat> But, it, uh, but it's also logical, oh yes sir, a better analogy would be this. So it would be unreasonable, completely illogical for me to think that um, this box DVD set arose by itself without any intelligence behind it. Now, I can see that judging by the visuals and the pictures and the right and the brief synopsis of the back of this um, of this DVD that it would require require, would require intelligence and, and, intel, and, and at least one intelligent mind to put this uh, together. Now, if I told you that this arose through natural selection, you would say that I'm out of my mind and I belong in the loony bin. <laughs> I should be in a psych ward. And you'd be right. The thing is, we don't take that same line of reasoning when we look at the world and say, well, who made all of this? You see, <clears throat> induction, log, in, logical induction would lead us to conclude that someone must have put this all together. We can't get life from non-life, we can't get intelligence from non-intelligence, and we can't get something from nothing. So we're left with, I mean, when it comes to epistemology, we only have three options. There is a God, there might be a God, and there is no God. So, it's either in pos it's, it's either have to be in positive, withhold judgment, or, the, or God doesn't exist. Now, God's, God not existing, um, I mean, logic rules that out because if the, if, if the thoughts in your brain and mind are nothing more than the process of natural, natural selection, natural selection, um, Naturalism arising through natural selection, it's the process of macroevolution, and everything is just determinism. So there's nothing logical about determinism. Everything just is. I have no choice to make. You have no choice to make. Everything just is. So it doesn't work logically. It doesn't work morally, <clears throat> because if you take out of the out of the equation, it's not. There's no right and wrong. Everything is just a matter of preference. In other words, to, if it, rape is neither wrong nor right, it's just. I don't think it's right, but I can't. When in atheism, I can't. I, I can't positionally, definitively say that rape, as horrible as it is, is definitively wrong. Positionally, philosophically, I can't make that claim. No, I know. I know that the. I, and hear me clearly. I know that the atheist knows that rape is wrong. Okay, 
So we're talking about it's not it's not that I don't believe that atheists don't know these things. I know that I know that atheists know that rape is wrong, but what they can't do is give a justification for the act of rape being wrong. They know that rape is wrong, and the overwhelming majority of atheists, of course, will never um, commit the uh, the violent, horrific, traumatic act of rape. Um, but again, the atheist knows it's wrong. But, and the atheist will not do it because God has written his law in the hearts of all people. For the most part, most of us will never do that because God's written his law on our hearts. But the atheist won't be able to justify not doing it, <clears throat> which is not members. So remember, separate categories, people. Again, I'm not saying the atheist doesn't know that rape is wrong, but the atheism can't give a justification for rape being wrong. It's not the same thing. So that's logic, that's moral morality, because in order see in order for us to <clears throat> um, infer morality, we have to have an absolute authority for to that that can judge human behavior. And the reason that um, the source of morality can't be human is because if you know, if, if, if my morality is contrary to your morality, the only way we can, we can have a standard of whose morality is objectively right or wrong is that our morality can't start with humans. It has to, there has to be a source, a non-human source for morality. We call this being God. Okay, so, <laughs> so it fails moral at the, on the moral level, fails at the logical level, fails at the next one I'm talking about is the epistemological level. Again, so epistemology just means the study of knowledge, or maybe to put it flush a little more, how do you know what you know? Or to put it a little more elaborately, how do you know that what you know is true? I like to think of it this way. <clears throat> think of epistemology as you, um, an analogous, analogously as um, a contractor for a, who, who builds houses for a living. Let's say hypothetically, I'm a contractor and I, I build houses for a living. I don't, but just for the sake of the argument, hear me out. <clears throat> so, if I'm a contractor, of course, like any contractor who builds his, who builds houses for a living, you have to start the foundation because, well, that's the only way to build a house from the ground up. Now, if I, as a contractor who's who makes house, who builds houses for a living, cut corners on the foundation, if the <clears throat> Um, let's say I get cheap materials, and um, I didn't use a I, my my level was I didn't use a I didn't get a level I just try to eyeball it, and so maybe there's a bit of a slope on the foundation <clears throat> because I'm just trying to cut corners and save cost at the cost of my uh, um, customer client of course, um, so obviously that'd be an unethical thing to do. I'm not saying I would do these things. I'm just saying, as a, again, this is a hypothetical. Okay, so if I cut corners on the foundation, I just try to eye it, and then and I cut and I got cheap materials to save cost to me, and then let's say over time <clears throat> that house starts to deteriorate and it has and it has structural issues from the ground up because I was not careful with the foundation, and therefore the house began to crumble, deteriorate, and maybe even to collapse itself and blow it all together. Now. That is true in the real world, but the thing is, it's also true in when it comes to the foundation of our lives. So if the foundations of your life, I'm talking about the psychological foundations, the mental, emotional, psychological, and spiritual foundations of your life and mine are not built on a solid foundation, then it's only a matter of time before the house of your life and my life starts to unravel, deteriorate, and self-destruct. It's only a matter of time. <clears throat> but the thing is, you can't trust atheism epistemologically because <clears throat> it's you can't prove it, and you can't know it. And you have no way to infer it with any kind of... Ob any. There's nothing in the natural world that would lead you to conclude that it's true because there's no... It's just absurd. <laughs> okay, so that's the third argument. <clears throat> the fourth and final argument that I will give... <clears throat> there is more, but I, I just try to keep it to four for the sake of uh, brevity. Fourth argument is a 
uh, the design argument. So <clears throat> once again, so you, you know and I know that um, that intelligence, that this box set of DVDs and the writing on the back and the visuals of pictures came from at least one intelligent mind. My guess is probably more, but at least one <laughs> intelligent mind put this together. And again, if I told you that this was this just arose by itself uh, through the process of natural selection <clears throat> without any intelligence behind it, you would say I belong in a psych ward, and you'd be right. But again, that if you don't care, you should, that the very, very same line of reasoning should also be equally applied to the, the universe. If you tell me that the universe is uncreated and unguided and there is no spot, there is it doesn't it wasn't designed that's that's a that that is on a level of absurd that's unparalleled it's willful ignorance like if you really believe there's no god and that the universe is uncreated you're being willfully ignorant and you've reduced yourself to absurdities there has to be a God, not because I want there to be a God, but because it's the most logical, rational explanation for um, the, the natural world. Um, and there's reasons I have for that, and I'm going to get into that. You know, I have a debate in a, in a few months in uh, June. So what are we at now? Almost the end of April. It's in. It's, it'll be June third. So yeah, it's about two months away. <clears throat> And I'm going to flesh these arguments out in greater detail in that debate. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, atheism. So, I've given... I mean, there's four reasons. So, so what I want is one again. And so, so it's an attack on positions, right? So, in this video, I've given my... I have reasons why I think homosexuality is unnatural. I have reasons why I think abortion is murder, and I have reasons why I believe theism generally, but also believe specifically that uh, um, Christianity specifically is the only answer we have for the mess the world is in. And again, these are positions I take, right? So my positions don't um, determine, well, they do determine, I suppose. Um, to some degree, how I treat people, but if I'm against the position, so if I'm against homosexuality and I'm against abortion, I'm not against homosexuals as people, and I'm not against women who have had abortions as people. I'm against the conduct, the act of it. And that's not the same as thing as being against the people who do the acts, okay? And the third, um, which is about the, the reasons I give why theism is logical and atheism isn't. Again, it's an attack on the position, not the people holding the position. So I'm against atheism, not atheists. So again, we have to be able to separate the uh, the ideology and the position from the people who hold to the ideology and the position. I love atheists, but I hate, I absolutely despise atheism. Okay, so again, people, please, let's be adults. Let's separate categories and understand that the, there's a difference between attack on a position and attack on a, per, on a pe person or people who hold a particular position, okay? Let's, let's, let's be adults about this. I'm going to leave the comment section open, hoping that I ha can see some kind of uh, restore my faith in atheists. No, restore my faith. Maybe... No, it wouldn't be a restoration of my faith. Restore my faith in atheists having good arguments or rebuttals. If atheists have good arguments and rebuttals, I will leave this open. But if I see it just a, a shit show, I'll just turn the comments off again. So, if the comments stay open, that means you're doing good. But I mean, if it's just the odd idiot, I can understand that. I'll do, I'll do, I'll ratio it. So. If it's just a couple of stupid comments and the majority are actually well thought out rebuttals and arguments, I'll leave it open. So I'll I'll do it like this. If if the comments are at least this is high for an atheism, but if the comments are at least 70, 75% in favor of 
decent rebuttals, argumentations, and, 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 and give way to open dialogue, then I will leave it open. <clears throat> but if it's more than 30% <clears throat> of comments from atheists that are just a shit show and a, a bunch of um, fallacies, insults, fallacies, or both, then I'm just going to close comments. So if they stay open, it means you're doing well, and if they get closed, it means it's your fault. So it's up to you. All right? Peace out, Brother Rob. <laughs>